Hello, everybody. Oh, wow, that's really loud. I don't need it. How are you? <laughs> I'd like to welcome everybody to the fifth presentation in the Peer to Peer Inclusive You um, series that we've been having this semester. Um, I decided this time that I would do the introductions. I've asked several people. Um, Let's see, who have I bothered here? Linda and TT have done some introductions, and Matt Taylor was a fill-in introducer. Um, but since this event is about you, and about your perceptions, and your experiences in college, I decided this time I would do the introductions. So, you all know who I am, I'm Dee, Assistant Director for the Tayshoff Center for Inclusive Higher Education, and the Coordinator of the Peer-to-Peer -Peer Project. I would like to introduce our presenters today. Um, this is Matthew Ratzka. He will be speaking first. He is a student at the College of Charleston in South Carolina. And yes, I've already apologized for the weather. Um, Teddy Fitzmorris is in the back. Um, Teddy is an entrepreneur, the owner of Teddy's Tees that has um, a beautiful selection of t-shirts and pins with social justice themes printed on them, which are terrific and are in the back for sale. Um, in addition to that, Teddy is a student at Schoolcraft Culinary School. And in the back, this is Shayla Burks, who graduated in 2004? 2004, 2004, from Lemoyne College with a degree in history. And um, it looks like everybody is here. We did have some students we invited from Hobart, William Smith. Unfortunately, they got a flat tire on the throughway. So, kind of too bad for them, but it means that, that folks will really have a chance to discuss their experiences, and I'm excited about that. So, I will turn the microphone over to Matthew Batska. Good afternoon. My name is Matthew Alexander Raska, but please call me Raska. I'm here to tell you what my point of view is of what inclusion should be. I'm also here to tell you about my experience at the College of Charleston in South Carolina. Now, let me talk to you about a little bit what I think inclusion should be from my perspective as a fellow student who is also learning disabled. With inclusion, there should be no separate programs where it's people with learning disabilities only. Reason why is because from my experience, if you put a student with learning disability in, well, any all student, in a setting where everyone has the exact same problem, they're never going to change. Because in their minds, in their viewpoint, that is the social norm. And if you are making them, and if you're going to make rules for your college or for your program, they should apply to real life, and everyone should have to follow them, not just students with learning disabilities. Because if you're making them follow rules that don't apply in the real world, how do you expect them to handle themselves out there in the real world where those rules don't even exist? Like, for example, the whole chaperoning thing and other ridiculous rules that never apply in real life, no one's going to have a person watching them 24-7 all the time. If you're having a person watching your students 24-7, they're not going to be independent they're going to be thinking, okay, I can always go to this person for help even though he's not even there. And if you're making them follow rules that only apply to them and nobody else, you're basically teaching them that society in the world doesn't want them. And that's going to hit them really hard and make them want to quit college and give up on being independent entirely. I know this because I've seen it myself several times. As well as inclusion, students should all, shouldn't be forced to announce they have a learning disability to the general public. If you're forcing a student to announce they have a learning disability, that's going to make them feel like they're being singled out, make them feel very uncomfortable, and probably draw in a lot of bad attention to them that they don't even want. They should only tell people that they have a learning disability to people that they trust and who they feel most comfortable with. You don't need to announce it to the entire class. And, as well as inclusion, <clears throat> students should be able to join any clubs they want and go and choose all their own classes. 
They, and there should be no chaperone of segregation with any of the clubs whatsoever. See, when I joined these clubs, I learned that there were people out, never mind, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'll talk to you about that later. But anyways, you should let students be able to join any clubs they want and go to the classes that they choose to go to for their own career. Am I right? As well as with inclusion, you should always have all the dorm situation inclusion as well. You shouldn't have like a separate dorm setting where it's people with learning disabilities only. Because to be honest with you, I live in my own dorm setting with other students that is complete inclusion myself. And I can tell you this, that us people with learning disabilities who want to go to college, we don't need someone to force us to go to classes or force us to go to the events or force us to do homework. We do it because we want to do it. We want to get a career. If you give us a chance to be independent and be successful, we definitely will show you that we want to be successful. <laughs> also, with inclusion, <coughs> sorry. Man, I swear, I'm speaking to so many of you, I'm glad to see all of you are listening. No chaperones, and students should be feel the free to take a test in an area that makes them feel more comfortable. Don't just separate them from the classroom, put them in a box to take a test, because I'm going to be honest with you, that's really uncomfortable for everybody. I guarantee you, they will not do well. If they need extra time on a test, put them in a setting where they can take the test in a comfortable setting. The other thing about inclusion, and this is going to be a, a rule that's not going to apply to inclusion, but can apply to real life in any school setting. This rule is, you should never tolerate bullying within an academic setting with students. Reason why is because, well actually there's several reasons why. First reason why is that if you are tolerating bullying within your campus, whether it be with traditional students or learning disabled students or whatever, you're essentially teaching them that they can get away with it. And if you're teaching them that they can get away with tormenting other students, how long do you think it's going to be till they're out there in the real world breaking laws? By teaching them that they can get away with it, you're teaching them that they are above the law, which I'm pretty sure is something we don't want to teach them. Am I right? Yeah. Another thing with inclusion is that students with learning disabilities can decide on what they need. They don't need other people telling them that they need this and that and this and that. We know what we need. Am I right? Yeah. Like, let me ask you here. You there, Terry, young man, in the, jump, in the orange jumpsuit. Let me ask you a serious question. I want you to give me your honest opinion. Can you hear me? Tell me, if you were to go to a campus and suddenly people diagnose you with a learning disability, and you have a grown adult coming up to you that you have never even met before telling you, okay, you're a learning disabled. You need a chaperone. You need a guide. You need people forcing you to go to everywhere. You need people watching you 24-7 and this and that. What would you say to that person? <laughs> what about any of you? Like for you, for example. What would you say to that person? Just be honest with you. If you tell, say that first, if you got diagnosed with learning disability, and somebody from your campus, a grown adult or in their forties, comes up to you, who you never even met before, telling you that you need all these things, what would you say? I would say, um, dude, I don't even know who you are. We have never met before. You do not know me whatsoever, and I don't need you to tell me about my career point and what I need. I know what I need, and I'll ask for what I need. If I need extra tutoring, I'll ask for extra tutoring. If I need extra time on tests, I will ask for extra time on my tests. 
Now, moving on to what my life at the College of Charleston has been like for me, and to be honest with you, it's a pretty good college. I'm sure you're all wondering, what are my classes like at the College of Charleston? Well, that is a very good question. In my classes, I'm free to know differently than anyone else. No one knows I have a learning disability unless I tell them on my own free will. Because of this, I'm not looked at as a learning disabled person. I'm just a person, a regular human being wanting to be successful. And to be honest with you, that's all I think any of us want. I don't think any of us want to be singled out and be forced to announce that there's something different about us. As for my combinations in classes, I am given extra time on my test, and I'm also given extra tutoring. But I'm still expected to complete all the classwork and all the class material. And I'm just like any other student. And once again, no one knows I have a learning disability, unless if I tell them. Here is a post some slides of me at the Cooper River. Oh, no. oh wait, never mind. I'm sure you're all wondering how do teachers support my individual needs. Well, I just told you that, so how about we move on? And I'm sure you're all wondering how could we improve my experience in the actual class itself. Well, I actually thought about that. I'm deciding that one example is that professors should make their, make their lectures more entertaining so that people, not just with learning disabilities, but all students in general, could listen to better. Because let's face it, I doubt anybody is going to listen to a lecture that came straight out of the textbook. Have any of you guys ever listened to a lecture that came straight out of the textbook? I mean, seriously, anyone who's listened to a lecture turn out straight out of the textbook, raise their hands. How many people of you have just not even bothered listening to a lecture straight out of the textbook and just read the textbook yourself? My point exactly. And also, students, teachers should like change up their methods a bit to support nature that everyone passes, because let's face it, no one reads. No one learns the exact same way as everyone else. And that's the thing for said with everybody. At the College of Charleston, campus life is very great. Here I can go to any clubs I want and go to any activities without the need of a chaperone or a babysitter. I mean, seriously, it is embarrassing to go tell people that I need a chaperone at my age. Wouldn't you all be embarrassed and do you need to tell people you need a chaperone at your age? And a lot of good has come from these clubs I've been in. Because I've been in all these clubs, I learned something very important. I learned that there are people out there that respect me and appreciate me for who I am, learning disability and all. And if I can finally let down my guard a bit and not be constantly scared or afraid that someone's going to try to take away my freedom whenever I do something that a natural person would do. And you may not notice, but when it comes to people with learning disabilities, having our freedom take away is what we fear most in our lives. Which I'm sure it's hard to say seeing how that we're supposed to be in the land of the free and all. Am I right? Here's a slide of me at the Cooper River Bridge Run, one of the biggest charity runs on the country. I participated, my parents sponsored a small team, and we had the time of our lives doing it. And I even did it this year, it just recently happened, and this year there was over 40,000 runners in the event, including myself. I went there, completely did the race, completely independently, without any chaperones whatsoever. <coughs> If I can do that, I'm sure anyone can do that. And here's a trip picture of me with the former campus president himself, who welcomed me with open arms even though I had a learning disability. And if a person like this can accept me, learning disability and all, why can't everyone else? Am I right? You're right. 
Another thing that I did in one of my campus lives was that I went on a trip to Disney World, a school trip to Disney World, completely independently, without any support staff whatsoever and no extra any support at all. I did it all by myself. I had a time of my life. And an insider perspective on campus outcomes. I'll be honest with you, this outcome at my campus has saved my life so much. I am glad to have come to campus where everything is inclusive. I am trying to be going into the medical field, public health, trying to become a med tech as well as x ray tech. <laughs> and I'm all sure you're all wondering. How can we improve my campus experience? Not just better me, but, but better everyone else. I'm sure you're all wondering that for yourselves. Well, to be honest with you, at my inclusive campus, I would like a better dorm room and a better meal plan. <laughs> because I gotta admit, like in most college campuses, the meal plans aren't all that good. Am I right about this? Am I right? <sighs> well, I'm sure everyone else needs to speak. So I'll let turn the microphone on to someone else. Thank you very much for listening. Can I hold it? Yeah, I'm trying to do that. Okay. They can't see. Okay. Hi. Good morning. I'm Teddy Fitzmaurice. That's my mom. <laughs> And um, where are you from? I'm from Michigan, West Bluefield to outside Detroit, closer to New York City. Not close to New York City. Yeah. What's important about New York City? That I born live here. You were born in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you do now? And I do. What are we here to talk about? Going to college, right? I go to college, school class, college. And what kind of classes do you take? Um, I cook. I cooking in school. What kinds of things do you cook, learn how to cook? I cook a chicken. And probably some chicken and lots of stuff. What other kinds of stuff do you cook? And um, I can't remember yet. Hey. I'm stirring. Stir, what do you stir them? Let's stir in a pan. So what kinds of things did you have to learn in cooking class? What were the things you had to, that everybody had to learn how to do? Yeah, four people to help us. You work in teams, right? Yeah. The class has 20 people in it, and they wake up into five teams of four people. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And so four people work together. Well, I'm going to a pizza. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so what do you, you the, four, <laughs> the four people on your team, what do you do together? Um, we all try to help the cook. You all help each other cook, right. Because some of you can do what? Some of you are good at doing what? What are you good at? Um, are you good at cutting things up? I go good cutting and stuff. What are you not good at? I'm not good at I can't cut myself. You can't cut yourself, right? That's not a good thing to do. Yeah. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes every cook cuts themselves. Yeah. Even the best cooks in the world sometimes cut themselves. Yeah. What else do you do besides cut up vegetables and cut up chicken? Yeah. I mean, that's what you do in the beginning. Then what do you do? Um, we make more money in that. We're not talking about the money part yet. That's the second part. So what about the recipes? I can't read a recipe. <coughs> can't read the recipes. Right. That makes it hard to take these classes, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So instead of having recipes that you have to read, what would you like? I like chicken. No, the recipes. How would you like the recipes to be? I can't remember it yet. Well, instead of reading, what would you like to do? You told me. Um, 
Pictures. Pictures, right. You'd like to have picture recipes. Now, the people you take classes with, can they read? I can't read. Are you are. I know you can't read, but the people you're taking classes with, do they read? They tell me both. Can I? Yeah, I think probably all of them can. I don't know. A lot of people are blind. Yeah. But the classes that you take, are you the only person in class that has a disability? Mm hmm. So. Nobody else has a disability that you know about. No, I don't. So, what are some of the things that happen different in class because you're in class? Do you know? Mm hmm. When the chef does a demonstration, who does he do a demonstration with? When he showed everybody how to how to cut chicken, who did who who was the person who he helped cut the chicken up? Um, I can't. Yeah, you can. What do you say? The chicken. The chicken. The chicken. When he taught you how to cut up chicken into all those different pieces, chopped it all up, who did he help? I helped the four people. He helped the four people, yes. But you were the one who helped him show the whole class because you were the one who was the student that didn't already know how to do everything because some of the other students thought they knew how to do it, but they really didn't know how to do it. And so the chef likes to teach Teddy in front of everybody else because Teddy doesn't have it in his brain already how to do something. So when the teacher teaches him, he listens to the teacher and that's the way he does it. He doesn't do it the way he wants to do it. He does it the way the chef thinks is best. So that's why he uses you to do demonstrations, right? Mm-hmm. So when you do the cooking, you all work together, right? Yeah. Four people work together. We all people, I say, we are teens. You're doing fine. So the four people, they work together, right? Yeah. And what happens with the four people? Do they make all the food together? Yeah, they all the time they cook. And then do you eat it all together? The, the, yeah. And what else happens with the four people? Um, I say I can't. No, you're fine. You're my, fine. Uh, my brain. Your brain is fine. Do you guys all get to be friends? Get to be friends. Yeah. So what kinds of cooking have you done? Um, what did Chef Anna teach you how to cook? Anna, wait, I know about Anna. Right, so what kinds of things did Chef Anna teach you how to make? Okay. Chef Anna, what did she teach you how to make? I'm making um, Indian. No, that's wait, a Mexican. No. Mexican, yes. Chef Anna taught you how to make Mexican food. What kinds of foods did she teach you how to make? Yeah, uh, yeah that's right. What kinds of what kinds of foods did Chef Anna teach you how to make? Um, uh, yeah. my brain not working that well. Your brain's fine. Keep, keep. I sorry, I have disability. Is it illness? Yes, you have a disability. It makes you it makes it hard to think sometimes. Right? Yeah. That's fine, Teddy. You're among friends here. Yep. A lot of us have that problem. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. That was the paper does. So, besides cooking classes, no, actually, show them your jacket. That's one of the things you have to wear for class, right? Yeah. Everybody, they're all the same, and they all wear chef jackets, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, chef, chef classes, cooking classes, or one thing you do at school craft. What's the other thing you do? You want to take your jacket off? Show them what the other thing? Well, nothing about cooking right now. Right. We'll go move on from cooking. You take besides cooking classes. You I take. I want to look at pizza. Take business classes, right? <laughs> right. You take business no, classes. Can't take too? it off. I can't take it off either. Your teeth can help me. No. Yeah. I just can't get it with one hand. There we go. Somebody keeps talking to me. There we go. Now go. Now go. So you have a business. So we took business classes, right? <laughs> I feel better with that. <laughs>
No ID in my head. Okay. So you have a, a business selling what? I'm selling t-shirts. Yeah. Oh, they're back there. <laughs> and so we took a business class. And what kinds of things did you learn in business class? Did you learn about? About t-shirts. What, what's this? Did you learn about business cards? Yeah. But what did we learn about business cards? Yeah, put on your phone. Yeah, you make sure your phone number's on it. Because we had a business card that had no phone number on it. Oh, no. Just forgot. <gasps> right? Oh, it's me. <laughs> the cookie is working. Yeah. So the cookie's working? Yeah. So what, else, so what else did we learn in business class to put on your business card? What are some, what's the other thing that we... Um, you make a camera on there. Right, there's a symbol on Teddy's business card that you can use your camera and you take a picture of it, it goes right to his website. Wow. So we learned how to do that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, that was important, wasn't it? We didn't do that either, right? Yeah. And what are some of the other things we learned in business class? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Business classes were really hard, weren't they? Yeah, so we uh, yeah. <laughs> They didn't make very many accommodations for you in business class. Right? Um, Key, who I bring you my six baby here? Yeah, over here. Are you wanna come oh, yeah, please. Yeah. So, what are, what are the things that you did learn in business class? Even though they didn't do much in terms of making any accommodations for you, what did you learn in business class? Thank you, Keith. Eddie? What? Business classes. What are some of the things you learned in business class? I don't know about business class. I about t shirts. You want to talk about t shirts? Tell yeah. me. As soon as we talk about business classes, then you can talk about t-shirts. Yeah. Okay. So we watch. What did you do in business class? We watched a lot of videos, right? Yeah. Videos with pie charts. Lots of pie charts. Lots of statistics. Right. Lots of numbers. That was hard, wasn't it? Yeah, it was hard. It was hard. But sometimes, what would happen in class? Would somebody? take you aside and explain it to you? Yeah. And that helped? Right? Hello? What? <laughs> I say I have my brain changed. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. So we also learned about sales, about how to sell t-shirts, right? Yeah, we also sell t-shirts and buttons. Right. And that part you paid attention to really good, and you learned a lot, like how to sell t-shirts, right? Yeah. So what are some of the things you have to do when you sell that you learned in business class? Um, um, you give one of these to everybody? Yeah, we have to give it to anybody. Anybody. How many people have you given these out to? You know? I, I don't even remember. I can't. I don't remember. You know, I have bought at least... <coughs> 5,000 business cards for Teddy, wow. and he's in business for eight years. But we just ordered another 1,000 business cards because we ran out. Oh, wow. So we give out a lot of business cards, don't you? Yeah. That, that lesson you learned really well. Don't let anybody go away without a business card. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the other things you learned? Uh, go back at the beginning. No. Yeah. What are some, what is, no, well, don't, is, don't, is, yeah, is but buy the t-shirts. <laughs> All right. I sell t-shirts and buttons. I meet that shirt. They're uh, very tired. They spread the word. This is, this is actually one of the things that we did learn in business class. And that's that Teddy's designs, this is the design that he made himself. He gets help from other people to t make the designs, but he comes up with the idea. So this is a paper shredder, and the piece of paper had the word retard on it. And the piece of paper got put into the shredder, and so all the letters are separate. They're not together. So we 
put the word in the shredder, we want to shred it, and we want to get rid of it, right? Yeah. No more words. I don't want shredder at all in New York. Yeah, we don't want any recharge word. Right? Yeah. What about this And shirt? this one I made, I Love My Life. I don't know about how to laugh yet. Everybody does not. But this one, Teddy said he had a I Love New York shirt. And he told me, he said, I want a I Love New York My Life shirt. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, I want a I Love My lo I Love New York My Life shirt. And it was about a year later we went to Washington, D.C. and they had I Love Washington, D.C. shirts. And he said, I want a I Love New York, Washington, D.C. shirt. And then it dawned on me what he wanted. And so we came up with this design. And the special thing about this shirt is that the white ink is printed at a company that prints the shirts for us. But the pink heart, Teddy paints. Oh, nice. That's nice. And this one, the people just have people like zero cubes. Like Marco did too. So this is this is the only shirt that Teddy sells that isn't his own design. And this one is very close to our heart for very for lots of reasons because the first time Teddy went to college was at Syracuse. Before anybody at Syracuse was taking classes that had intellectual disabilities, I was going here to take and taking classes in disability studies. And Teddy went to all of my classes with me. And Teddy participated in all the classes. So even though he didn't get any credit, he was there and he listened oh, so and he participated. Name. But this is a Syracuse shirt. This is from the Center on Human Policy. Label jars, not people. I got my name and my first name is Christopher James, who I'm Teddy. Now what does your shirt say that you have on? The shirt that you have on, what does it say? Oh, that's a yin yang, a button. That's your button. But what does your shirt say? Ha ha, come and show them on you. Right. So, if any of you don't know what Down syndrome is, <coughs> if you don't have Down syndrome, you have 46 pairs of chromosomes. But if you have Down syndrome, you get an extra pair. So that means if you have Down syndrome, you have more chromosomes than people who don't have Down syndrome. And so, Teddy thinks, and I think, that those extra chromosomes are good things. Not bad to have extra chromosomes. It's a good thing to have extra chromosomes. I right? don't know anybody in my high school. We're not talking about high school. No, I don't know anybody in high school. Okay. And chromosomes. Okay. Oh, okay. So, going back to college. So, what's the best thing about going to college? What's your favorite part of college? I love college a lot. You love college a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, is, what is it you love the best about college? Um, it's yeah. a big school. It's a big school, yeah, and you like that there's lots of classes? Yeah. Yeah, so when you want to take a class, there's lots of classes to choose from? Yeah. You wish there were more classes? Lots of classes a lot. Teddy takes only classes that are called hands <laughs> hands-on cooking classes, mm -hmm. because they have classes that are like lectures, just like any classes you're used to, and then they have classes where you're in the kitchen and you're learning how to cook. And Teddy only takes the classes where you're actually learning how to cook, by actually cooking food. He doesn't take the classes where somebody just stands in front and lectures, because somebody I know falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> they catch sleep sometimes. I have a dream, my grandfather. So one of the problems Teddy has with taking th those classes with lectures is Teddy has a hard time paying attention for a very long time. So if the lecture is an hour long, that's too long. He can't pay attention for an hour. He can pay attention good for 15 minutes, maybe for a half an hour if he's something he's really interested in, but an hour doesn't happen. And so even if he really likes the class, even if he really thinks it's important, an hour is too long, <coughs> right? Yeah. So when Teddy takes these classes, there's usually a little lecture in the beginning because the chef has to show everybody how to do the cooking. But because Teddy gets to help him do the cooking, it's not that boring for Teddy. 
right? Yeah. But what else do you like about college? Um, I don't know about anybody. I don't know anybody. You don't know everybody? Yeah. At college? Get, get to college kids. Get to know college kids, right? Yeah. Not other people. You don't get to know all the people? No. You wish you could get to know more people? I do like young people. You want to get to know more of the young people? Yeah. Yeah. So you want more opportunities to meet people on campus? Yeah. Because Teddy goes to a community college, so there's no dorms. So the kind of social events that they have are very limited. It's not like where Matthew is, where he gets to be involved in all these things and worries about chaperones. Teddy doesn't have to worry about chaperones because everybody who's coming to classes and coming to campus for activities lives in their own home. They don't live in a dorm. So that makes it a very different kind of college experience with very different kinds of worries. Teddy gets worried about how is, how is he going to get to class. Um, in the beginning, I always have to go and I always have to drive him. But hopefully what happens is sometime after two or three weeks of classes, somebody will say, well, I could pick Teddy up. And then instead of me going, it's, it's one of the persons, usually on Teddy's team, that picks him up and takes him to classes, right? Yeah. Do you become good friends with your team members? Well, I don't know if they're good friends or not. Well, you don't know them in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And you don't know if they'll be good friends. Sometimes, that's the other thing that before <coughs> Teddy had said. Sometimes it's hard because the, the way the teachers, some of the, some of the chefs do the, the teams, is they go around and they say, one, two, three, four. You're in team one, you're in team two, you're in team three, you're in team four. And then you're in one, two, three, four. And then, because they want people to be on a team together that don't know each other. Well, for Teddy, it's important that he knows who he's on a team with. So that works the opposite of helping Teddy. That actually hurts Teddy. But Teddy would like to be on teams where he knows the people already, and they know him, so they already know how to work together. Yeah. Yeah? Anything more you want to say about that? No. Oh, the my friend Keith. <laughs> Thank you. They kick you and me, my mom and I. That's right. No, anything else? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. No. That's great. Anything Eddie, else thanks. you want to talk about college? No. I really don't want to talk about college right now. Okay. okay. You want to talk about something else right now? Yeah. Have one minute and talk yeah, about yeah, something else. Yeah, you just find more. Okay. What do you want to say? Um, I got my own car. I should pass it out. We'll pass out okay. the cars. We'll make sure everybody gets a car. <laughs> Anything else? That's it. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. Michelle Parks. Hello. 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 And these are my experiences in school. When I went to elementary school, I went into an inclusive classroom. At the time, I didn't know that I had a disability, much less what it was. The elementary school experience was similar to that of other students. Although I had trouble with social skills, I was able to do the work that other kids did. The teacher supported me and I made good childhood friends with the typical students. When I went to middle school, I learned that some students learn differently from others. Although some people struggle to get through middle school, I found that I was doing really well on my schoolwork. The special education teachers in the school gave me much support that I needed to get through middle school. I even made it to the National Junior Honor Society. My struggles really started in high school. Once there, it was more difficult to convince people that I could do the work because I was in a self-contained special education class. In my freshman year of 1993-1994, I had only one meaningful regular class. By the end of 1994-1995 school year, my mother could see that I wasn't being talented enough. So she went to my high school and told them to include more regular classes to my high school program. I sometimes wish that I had more support in my first two years of high school. As for the rest of my time in my high school, I eventually 
learning more about my disability. One person in my special education class called me their dad because I like to study and learn. My dream was to go to college one day. However, not everyone shared my, my beliefs. Some people said I could never go to college because I was in special education. I ignored them and continued to work through high school. In 1997, I made it to the National Honor Society. I also got support from the Boys and Girls Club. On March 2000, my mother gave me my acceptance letter from Illinois College. I was so excited that I was going to college. I received many scholarships along the way. I graduated from high school in June 2000. College was tough at first, but I had many supports. I had a person that attended classes with me, a note taker, and the services of the academic support center. I also learned that different people from different walks of life were attending college. With help from my support, I was able to do the work. When I joined LeMoyne's History Academy, I learned that different students were able to learn about each other. I dressed up for the History Academy event. It was then when I was in college that I learned to stand up for myself more. I graduated from Lemoyne College in May 2004. I now work for Home Incorporated where I work as an administrative assistant. I help people with their work put paper in files and work on the computer. I also work poetry and prose. One day I hope to write a book and publish in my writings. I have brought up a, a poem that I wrote. It's about, it is, enti it is entitled, One Person Split in Four. I am a career woman. I am a rebel. I'm a little girl. I'm a woman with a disability. These four people live in me. They live in my mind. It is difficult to be all of those when everyone wants me to be one or the other. I am a rock star. I'm a jazz singer. I am a folk musician. I am a country pianist. I like all the music. It brings me joy to the emotional phase. It is difficult for me to be all of these when everyone wants me to be one or the other. I'm a child of the 80s. I'm a staffer of the Cold War. I'm a student of both world wars. I'm a resident of the 21st century. I try to escape my troubles by looking to another time. There is where I can relax by watching other people's lives. It is difficult to be all of these when everyone wants me to be one or the other. I'm a writer, I'm a painter, I'm a potter, I'm a mixed media artist. Sometimes words cannot fully capture my feelings, but pictures can make visual translations of what my voice leaves out. It is difficult to be all of these when everyone wants me to be one or the other. When a man catches my eye, I would tap to him, but I do it from a distance. When I act out, it means my emotions are getting in the way of what I want to say. My brain has two minds that inhabit me. One of an adult and one of a very curious child. It is difficult to be all of these when everyone wants me to be one or the other. I'm a schoolgirl who looks for comfort in her childhood. I'm a beautiful woman who escapes from the everyday in the baseball park. Whatever hat I wear, I will still be the same me and the four persons who live in me. It's difficult to be all of these when everyone wants me to be one or the other. First of all, um, thank you again to all three of our speakers who traveled from far and wide, uh, Matthew, Shayla, and Teddy. Thanks very much for coming. 
Now, what we'd like to do is this, um, to sort of informally have people in small groups. Um, I have, I, I already sent out like a list of questions for people to okay. think about. If you are interested and if you want to, kind of get some ideas in your mind about your own college experience, things that you liked, classes you really enjoyed, how you feel this has helped you, advice you would give to high school students. We'd like to give people a chance to do that. Um, Matt Taylor, wave Matt, okay. The gentleman back there in the red shirt, he is one of our students. He's in uh, classes through the Access program and he is a videographer, um, has his own business, and he will be doing taped um, personal statements in the other room. Again, this is completely voluntary. If you're not comfortable speaking on camera, that's okay. If you feel more comfortable reading something you've written, that's okay. If you want to have somebody helping you keep track of what you say, whether it's a support person or a friend or peer partner, Jack is here, Lee is here, um, Mike is here, um, who else? That would, that would be great. Yes, Dr. Harbour. Could you explain what we're doing with the video? Oh, what we're going to be doing with the video? We're hoping to collect a variety of students' statements. So take all of those little videotaped pieces and put them together into a longer presentation, where which we can perhaps bring to conferences in the future so that when people want to know more things about the college experience, um, things they should do and not do um, as far as making it a really good quality college experience like every other student is entitled to. Um, but they'll have some good evidence coming directly from you folks. So what I'm going to do at this point, um, I'm going to pass out some small sheets with some questions that are just sort of think about questions. Um, and then we'll start setting people up, if you're comfortable with that, to go in and videotape individually with Matt. And if you're not videotaping, um, you're welcome to check out Teddy's products, which are out in the hallway, available for purchase. And it looks like we have a lot of cupcakes left. So I don't usually have to <coughs> tell undergraduates what to do as far as cupcakes go. <laughs> okay, I will, um, I will hand out some of the little short question sheets so you can discuss a little bit. I'll be, Matt, maybe we can have you waiting by the door over yeah. there. And when you are ready, if you would like to make a statement, Go see Matt, and we'll get you set up in the other room. All right, and if I could see the presenters back by the aqua-colored bags, we have something for you to thank you for your efforts.